Well, I've been running that shot of Max Verstappen lowering his visor on the intro there for a while now in the belief that he's going to win a Grand Prix soon. And so it proved. I mean, this was one of the best races I've seen for a long, long time. It was amazing calling the race with Alex Jakes uh, in the booth, the commentary booth for pit lane television because yeah we were right it was just there as it was happening and then it was so emotional at the end to see i get very emotional when i see an athlete that good realizing his talent in that way and it all goes back to max the pure racer max going for the hard tire in q2 as i said yesterday that was always a risk there was a risk he wasn't going to get into q3 with that but he took the risk he had that total confidence that he could do it and that's an example of the way he simplifies his weekend okay maybe they're not going to do that let's let, he didn't know what the others were going to do let's go for the hard tire and then that long first stint that was the one of the best driven stints bearing in mind he was obviously on a full race load of fuel at the race start he made a great start off the line got Nico Hockenberg before he even got to turn one I think and then it was that first stint that did it it gave him that advantage and after that you know it was just all Max and Red Bull I said after after the first weekend that I thought Red Bull had done a really good job um, getting back up to speed particularly on medium and high speed corners Adrian Newey um, typical Adrian Newey after you, know, you, you give him a couple of bad races like Austria and Hungary and you know he's gonna bite back and and he did and a lot of people were saying after qualifying I think in the first race the British Grand Prix oh you know Red Bull still way away I was really impressed I think as I said at the time with what they did um, and also if you go back to my now infamous steps video when I was going up down the steps which I'm still doing every morning trying to anyway um, and I was saying you know in this sort of condensed championship this is the sort of championship very different from all everything we're used to I'm starting to sweat a bit because I've got the window shut the AC off very hot day just coming out of the commentary booth um, where we've been doing the TV the uh, but I'm gonna keep everything shut because the sounds obviously better if we do that anyway it's good to sweat they say and so yeah you know it, it was just a superb example of everything that's good about a race team that thinks clearly and quickly on their feet and I think you know obviously what we saw in the 70th anniversary Grand Prix was a very different race and it was a very different race purely because Pirelli produced a softer range of tires as we said and there were a lot of I was a bit surprised actually the, some of the media press conferences that Pirelli were holding after the after last week's race when obviously we had those tire failures there's a lot a lot of the journalists were saying you know aren't you worried you regret now that you've taken this decision to have softer compound and Mario Isola just to give him credit the credit he deserves was very calm no no we're not worried at all we don't need to put limit on the number of laps that can be driven in a stint it's up to the teams they know what they're doing absolutely correct to say that and of course the request to have the softer range of compounds came wasn't a decision actually made by Pirelli it was it was a request made by the teams and by the FIA if you're going to have two back-to-back -back races let's try and make them different and have different compounds and they were going to do that for Austria too but they didn't because they just didn't give Pirelli enough time to produce the second range of compounds it would have been interesting if they had of course so yeah uh, to me that was uh, it's underlined also how important tires are isn't it you know tires are massive if you took that race today as a snapshot and you just come down from the planet Mars and you were watching Formula One for the first time you'd say wow the Red Bull Honda is by far the best car because what I think was happening possibly this is a little bit simplistic but what I think happened today with the softer compounds was that the Mercedes power and grip level generated by the amount of downforce they have with the power that they harness which last week destroyed the left fronts this week went through the tires went through the hard tire particularly the rear more than a Red Bull Honda or a Ferrari and, and let's face it for proof of that the Ferrari driven superbly just as well as Max drove his Red Bull driven superbly by Charles Leclerc with a one-stop strategy when the two Mercedes were running out of rubber and, and, and blistering their tyres one stop strategy to P4 a very very difficult car to drive and Charles Leclerc just wrung the best from it 
on a day when Sebastian Vettel might have given up. He was so far off the pace, just battling in the midfield, lost it on the first lap in the traffic. Um, so yeah, those superlative words actually don't do justice to Max Verstappen or to Charles Leclerc, I think. And Lewis was, of course, amazing. Um, to beat Valtteri the way he did. I mean, if you take Red Bull out of this, Valtteri had the pole, Lewis made that long run on the blistered left rear and lived with it. He'd radio in and say, I've got the blister. Is it gonna be okay? Is it gonna blow out? And yeah, there in calm, serene surroundings, Mercedes saying, nope, you got enough rubber, don't worry about it. And that was that was a NASA mission control saying to them, no, we got it under control, don't worry. And that was very impressive to see as well, wasn't it? Because they were absolutely right, spot on. Um, and there were so many good things about this race, like that, little indications of all the good things about Formula One. And, and that's very fitting because it was the 70th anniversary. I gotta say, you know, I'm not sure what it means really, but for Red Bull to win that Grand Prix today and also to win the F2 feature race with Carlin and Yuki Tsunoda is, it says a lot about their involvement too, doesn't it? I mean, it's quite fitting really, if you think of the amount of money they've spent on motorsport over the last 20, 25 years, whatever it is, it's quite fitting that they did win this 70th anniversary Grand Prix. Um, Mercedes would love to have had it, obviously, but you know they'll be saying, well, you know, we had it right for one set of Pirellis, we didn't have it right for the other set of Pirellis, and that kind of is logical, isn't it? You can't build a car for all different types of tyre on the same circuit or different circuit. So, yeah, I thought it was an outstanding day's racing, really. No crowd there, but yeah, when you're doing TV and when you're watching it on TV, does it really? detract I think it probably does but at the same time I think anyone who watches that race will have felt not only the joy of seeing Max Verstappen doing what he does best but also would have felt that this is a race suitable for the name that it's been given and it typifies everything that we love about motor racing I just love the way Max and I've made this point before he's very like Nigel Mansell in the way he just, and Lewis to some extent, well Lewis, yeah, not to some extent, to a big extent, the way he just dilutes everything to very simple issues, like how fast can I go? And, and when they said to him, you know, don't get too close to Valtteri, you need to look after your tires. And his response was, you know, it was that of what we want to hear, wasn't it? Well, don't tell me that. This is the first time I've been near the Mercedes. I'm not going to back off. Well, that was absolutely brilliant. And that's, you know, that's Max Verstappen. So, yeah, it's been um, it's been an amazing two days actually. Some great racing yesterday. We had an American winning the F3 feature race in Logan Sargent. We had an, an amazing Formula 3 race today, worthy of all the Formula 3 races that would have taken place at Silverstone and in support of other Grand Prix going back to the 50s and 60s. It was a great race, won by won by a Dutch driver with a rather odd name. Bent Viscal, but this is the guy that was incredibly quick in the wet in Hungary and he's been pretty good ever since as well and drives for MP Motorsport, the Dutch team, and he uh, he was just excellent. Took the lead on the last lap going into Cops from Lirum Zindeli, a very quick young German driver who's excelled in German Formula 4, uh, lost it into Stowe and then regained it through the club complex and good luck to him. Great bit of driving. Interesting thing, I've got to mention it because I think it's significant, is that Bent Viscal has done a lot of work, training work with Rob Wilson, who I've often talked about as a driver coach who really knows what he's doing. And Valtteri Bottas has also done a lot of work with Rob Wilson, so there's the connection there. But Rob hasn't done stuff with Max Verstappen, he hasn't done stuff with Lewis Hamilton. And I think that's because those two drivers, uh, or Charles Leclerc, them, but those two drivers particularly are so natural that I'm not sure Rob would be able to add too much to them anyway. They're just born with it and they just maximize their talent 
in the perfect way and uh, we saw that today. We saw a great drive from Lewis, he only finished second. And this is the sort of day when, if Lewis finishes second, I'm sure when he wins the race he doesn't think, ah, oh, increase my lead in the World Championship. But when you finish second and you're looking for something to take away, you think, oh well, you know, it wasn't too bad. I've got a few more points in the Championship now. Where am I in the Championship? Oh, I'm leading the Championship. Wow, that's good, yeah. That's, that's what P2 will mean to Lewis today. He doesn't finish second very often, so, you know, it does happen. But but Red Bull beating Mercedes and, and Mercedes obviously a home race for them but it's a home race for Red Bull as well Milton Keynes just down the road uh, and, and that factory began and here's a little nice little tie with history I think that factory began of course from the early Stewart Grand Prix days which was Paul Stewart mainly but without Sir Jackie there Paul wouldn't have been doing that so that team has a link back to Sir Jackie Stewart and Max Verstappen's drive today was a drive worthy of Sir Jackie Stewart. And I've seen, I saw Jackie win races. I know how good he was, but I've seen Max and I know how good Max is too. So that is a genuine comparison and it works as well. That was a brilliant drive. Um, I wish I could go on and on about it really, but I've got to finish the video, I guess. And uh, I need to get the AC on, I think. But um, Max. What a, what a race. I just wish it had been a better start for the year for Red Bull in, in Austria and in Hungary because we'd have more of a championship. But going to Barcelona now, I suppose this is, a, this is the right way to finish this video is to talk about the teams in this heat. What is it now? 30 degrees as I'm driving through the um, Kent countryside. Not far from St Winston Churchill's house actually. So I'm driving through the Kent. There's a lovely old Humber there. I love driving through the uh, Kent countryside. 30 degrees the boys now the girls are having to pack up and be ready for the Spanish Grand Prix next weekend now normally that's a sweat it's a sweat today because of the heat it's a sweat also because of all the COVID protocols in place and it's a sweat because just to give you an example of what some teams are going through they booked their British Airways flights to Barcelona a couple of weeks ago everything was sorted and then the COVID rate went up in Spain and the British Airways flights were cancelled so they've had to find new flights they're not direct flights anymore and uh, you can't really drive realistically to Spain it's too far so for the teams now to get to Barcelona is a huge huge ask and uh, good luck to them if they make a three-day weekend out of the Spanish Grand Prix which I guess they will because they're that, that good they're not going to do that I think in uh, is it Magello or Portugal? It's a two-day two weekend. Fair enough, but I'm sure they will for Spain, but it'll be um, a feat of human endeavour in another way. But it'll be an example yet again of what Formula One is all about, how we move from one country to another, even in these very, very restrictive times. So, yep, hats off to Max, Red Bull, and to Mercedes, Pirelli, Hats off to, to everybody that made these two Silverstone Grand Prix happen because it would have been very easy to have cancelled them and not to have had them at all. Yeah, there were no fans, but there were marshals. Everything worked well. It was, it was an emotional day as well. And hats off, I think, to all the people that I've known and loved and who I still do in Formula One who've made this sport what it is. It's an appropriate moment to reflect that it is in many ways I think the world's greatest sport in that it combines technology with sporting prowess with politics with money with all the things that make the world go round if you like and with a deep spiritual uh, feel to it as well and we saw all of those coming together today at Silverstone and I just thought it was um, totally appropriate win Max Verstappen wow